Well, there it is. This is Witty Warcraft, and this is going to be a Witty Reacts video. There's going to be a lot of these coming up on the channel. There's quite a few videos I want to go through. Uh, some of the bigger YouTubers creating review content for Warcraft Free Reforged. Many people have asked me to take a look at these videos, even given some links. So I will be uploading these uh, sporadically, so to speak, throughout the few days that come up. And I will be intended to give my own criticism as well of Warcraft Reforged probably tomorrow from when this video goes out. So stay tuned for that if you was curious as to what my thoughts are. But these reaction videos are not just going to be me sitting in the corner staring at them. I do intend to actually respond to the criticism that comes up. So you're going to get a bit of an inclination as to what my initial criticisms are. And try to hopefully clear up any uh, issues that might be uh, cropping up and people don't understand fully. Although I don't think any of us truly understand what the hell's happened here. But we'll go into this. Spicy Goy, be nice. Yes, we're streaming this live on twitch.tv slash witty. And I'm going to start off with, funny enough, I thought it'd be kind of cute to start off on my own initial reaction to 2018 BlizzCon announcement of Warcraft Reforged. I'm only going to be doing the last four minutes or so of it because I want to try to keep these videos relatively short. This goes for all the React videos that I'll be doing. So my responses will be quite concise because some of the videos, hopefully most of them are about 10-ish minutes. And obviously when I start responding to things they say, it's going to drag on to 20 minutes and 30 minutes. So yeah. Okay, good. He's apologized. Right. So here's the thumbnail. This was the Witty reacts to Warcraft 3 Reforged. I remember getting a lot of backlash on this. I don't know whether those thumbs up have come after the fact. Because I remember when I released this, as is most of the case, when I sort of do early predictions or essentially early criticism of, of anything, most people try to shut me down. Uh, you remember when Night Elf was really, really overpowered not so long ago? Keeper of the Grove, Mass Hunts and uh, Archers. And I pointed that out. I made several videos and people just going, oh, you just can't play. And then, you know, a couple of weeks afterwards, everyone else started saying, hey, this Night Elf's really overpowered. I was like, I, f I told you. Well, you're going to get a little bit of that in this. So the last few minutes kind of sum up relatively what this whole video is about. You can watch this if you want. Um, I'll try to include links as well to any of these reforged uh, review videos. Obviously giving credit to the content that I'm stealing from, let's face it. Because that's what this new meta of YouTube is, the whole reaction thing. But at any rate, I do wish to give them some justice. Because I actually respect quite a lot of these YouTubers that create this content. So... This first guy, Witty Warcraft, I really respect him. He's, he's such a good streamer. He's actually quite, you know, low-key. He's not actually very well-known. So, you know, he's props to this guy. Maybe he'll make it someday. But, yeah, we'll start it off from this point, and uh, I'll just try to give some criticism. This bit I won't even need to criticize so much. This is just me playing it because this is me talking myself, so I already agree with myself. <laughs> There's not much to criticize when it comes to me, at least if you are me. Reforged, which has just been announced at BlizzCon, essentially a remastered version of Warcraft 3. The engine has been built up and improved. <laughs> I want to be positive, but my initial response was rough, that's for sure. I mean, that's what I'm trying to say. I hope with a year left to go, this could really be turned into a, a good future for Warcraft 3. They're redoing it, basically. So you see this level, the Cullen. What they're doing is they're redoing all the original Reign of Chaos campaign levels and TFT campaign levels. So they're not going to play how you think they play. Do I think? But the new redoing is questionable, seeing as we've obviously played through the entire campaign, particularly on this channel. There's a whole playthrough of it. If you check out the playlists, Witty Warcraft and YouTube, I've done every single campaign that is available now on Reforged on the hardest difficulty with basically 100% completion rate for the 99.9%. Uh, .9%. I might have missed out on like one thing. Otherwise, I covered over all the secrets and stuff. And there's really only a few, four levels at most, that are definitely significantly different. Otherwise, the rest are essentially copy pasta. But uh, it's still a lot of fun to play because it was a Warcraft free campaign, which is why I had a good time playing it. The models are too cartoon. The, the sure, new yeah. models are uh, like World of Warcraft and, models, but uh, even more realistic. Like someone said earlier, they're like the Warcraft the movie. There's a little bit of a freakish look so to them. 
Ufa looks like he drinks too much. He's got a big red nose. Arthas did nothing wrong. I hereby wrong. relieve you of your command and suspend your paladins from service. Arthas, you can't just... It's done. Those yeah, shut up, Jaina. I think they're just making the most of what Warcraft 3 has to offer and they're using it. Do you know what I mean? It feels like it's being used a little bit. They don't really want to make an amazing game out of it, from what I can tell. It's just another way to rehash the game and make money from it. That's how it feels to me. It's not exactly what we were after, was it? What were we after? Well, we just after the StarCraft style, where it was remastered, it just got shinier graphics on top of the original models. Because if you, if anyone's played StarCraft Remastered, when the portraits talk and stuff like that, it's the original portraits that are still talking, the animations. It's just painted over to look nicer. That's kind of what I think I would have preferred. Pracky says this seems like Warcraft 3 targeted to sell specifically to the newer generations of WoW kiddies. Damn. Take that. Yeah, pracky, yeah, the models pracky, were yeah. almost too detailed in a way. Isn't that funny how whilst we all want good graphics, we don't want them almost too good. I know those graphics weren't quite great in the cutscenes, but the, the, the display of the models, the level of detail, the amount of things that were going on was almost too much clutter. The original Warcraft 3 is very simplified. The limbs are very straightforward and clear to see. What's an arm? What's a shoulder? What's a bicep? What's a forearm? In this, it's like there's a forearm, then there's a chain here, then there's, you know, an element coming off here, then there's a curl around the back here, there's a wrist guard here. There's just too much. World of Warcraft 3. Was that like, was that a Freudian slip or... Uh, what's course, my two cents on this, Tyrael? I feel like it's a love letter to the original Warcraft 3 without actually giving the Warcraft 3 community what they fucking wanted, which was a remaster. If Alright, I'll probably finish it off there. Move into the Bellular video now. You get the idea. So, this is Force Downgrade Lies and Cuts, the War 3 Reforged Situation, 8.3's Evolution, and more. So, he's going to probably start off talking about Warcraft 3 and then move into, like, World of Warcraft. So, we'll stick around for the Warcraft 3 section. So give a thumbs up, that's the first thing you should do. Thank you, Bellula, for this. And uh, let's get started. I Hopefully the volume's okay and you can hear. Tuxian, you're linking me something else, are you? I'm scared to click on that. <laughs> I'm just going to continue for right, right now. What? What's your problem? Use this one instead. I, I think he's got another one, yeah. Um... We're doing this one for now, though. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to the Warcraft News. It's uh, It's been a week. The World First has kicked off. 8.3 is still developing, and uh, Warcraft 3 Reforged has got a bit of a situation. And yes, I do say situation, because between the Eula changes that kill a whole bunch of the really classic custom maps, and uh, quite a massive post-trailer downgrade of the four hours of Reforged cutscenes, yeah, I mean, the B... Wait. Let's just double check. You guys trying to interrupt the flow of this. How the mighty have fallen. Yes, that was the other video. I had that amongst my list here. There's a few to go through. Downgrading lies, forced. Yeah. I see. So we stick to this one, shall we? And then I'll just not worry about doing the other ones. Okay, well, let's stick to this one then. There is no beating around the bush here, right? Blizzard have ruined one of their flagship titles, and in doing so, the change that Blizzard has undergone in the last 18 oh, years, God. it's never been more apparent. From the player-focused company that offered us some of the most polished experiences in the PC market, to the company that released Warcraft 3 Reforged. They may even have taken the crown from Bethesda, as Reforged might be one of the most incompetent major releases <laughs> in modern gaming. It truly is is remarkable of course if you're new okay well he's coming out the gate not really holding back is he oh yeah i forgot to do the thumbs up remember that's what you do it's your thumbs up 
New here, we release six game industry analysis videos per week, so be sure to, you know, like, sub, all that good stuff for the this algorithm. Channel, and with that, way. let's get into the utter it's mess good, that is Warcraft 3 Reforged. Warcraft 3 Reforged was announced at BlizzCon in 2018, and this came actually after the success of StarCraft Remastered, an update that added in some remastered graphics and a bit of technical spit and shine mm. for modern PCs, and as a massive fan of that game, StarCraft Remastered was essentially perfect. Warcraft 3 Remastered though, well, it was a little bit higher in its scope. Reforged was to receive a full graphical overhaul, updated models, terrain, and environments, even tweaks of the design of some levels, a new UI for today's era, along with all new modern Battle.net features and four plus hours of reforged cutscenes. Okay, I just want to address the UI thing. Now, I can't remember off the top of my head whether the UI was a guaranteed thing. It may have been advertised as such on the Cullen of Stratham. I am aware of that. But it wasn't necessarily a set in stone thing as far as I was concerned, being... I mean, you could argue it's being sold to the fans that that's what they're going to get, a new UI. The UI is essentially, uh, I think he means in-game UI, yeah. The UI is essentially cut off now those extra bits. Remember when Warcraft 3 got a patch not so long ago where it was now fitted for widescreen and you had the sort of like the character models not stretched anymore, like um, the portraits, the actual UI itself. And then you had these kind of like side parts which was sort of just uh, a human castle or orc sort of barricades, that kind of thing that sort of filled in the spot. Uh, those are now being removed in Reforged. So you've got more empty game space on the sides that you can see, more fission. But otherwise, it's relatively the same. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, it being relatively the same, because the UI worked. It was never a problem in Refor I mean, in Warcraft 3. No one was complaining about the UI, apart from obviously for custom game potential with more than six inventory spots. But as far as melee was concerned, there was no issue there. Um, okay, let's continue. I don't want to go on too long because I was, the video is going to go on forever. It was originally promised to have actually had changes to keep it in line with World of Warcraft's development of the lore, including more involvement from major characters like, say, Jaina and Sylvanas. Mm. So essentially, they promised the world here. Warcraft 3, as you know it, but better in absolutely every way. It should look better, it should feel better, and it should not harm the core of Warcraft 3. They made that promise, they showed what we assumed was a reforged version of the opening cutscene, and, uh, well, they opened up the pre-order. Orders. Now, a reasonable $30 is what the game would cost. I think that would have been fair. $40 for the version full of cosmetics for other Blizzard games. And the $40 version also came with some cosmetic skins for hero units, which had some people rather suspicious. I mean, the game wasn't going to be out until sometime 2019, they announced, but it was already selling cosmetics. Luckily, that cosmetic fear didn't really come to pass. It wouldn't be a thing no. for War 3 Reforged. Unfortunately, though, every other fear did, as well as some things that we weren't even cynical enough to be afraid of in the first place. Warcraft 3 refunded. Warcraft 3 deforged. This game, as it was released, is the absolute antithesis of the original game and of Blizzard's ethos at that time. First off, let's talk about the promises they made and then reneged on. The most notable is the lack of story changes. And while this technically was announced via an interview with Polygon, they did talk about it at BlizzCon 2019, that was extremely late in the game's development and after pre-orders. In fact, most people had expected the game to have been released by then. And let's be real, if you're moral, you would not cancel a major feature without telling your customers ASAP because that was one of the all right well the first thing to address here is really the last point he made is the biggest backlash that Warcraft 3 essentially has gotten and the reason why it's been downvoted so much and hated is really because people were led to believe one thing and given another and there's such a lack of communication typically from Blizzard, particularly on the forums, and just no feedback to actually give relative realistic approaches. Okay, guys, this is what's going to happen, or we won't be able to deliver this. People just don't get told these things. And again, the website's still advertising one thing and giving another. And I would think in this day and age, you would pretty much have to reliably properly advertise what it is you are selling 
I don't know if movies really do this, where trailers, sometimes they'll show content in trailers which won't actually appear in the movie. Is that fraud? Is that misleading? Is that just trying to save the people from actually seeing any of the real content so that they don't get spoiled? But in the case of this, you're selling the game. So I think if it comes to selling, you should be showing what it is that you're giving. Core parts of Reforged, but it wouldn't be there. And without those changes, the entire $30 game essentially falls back to being a visual upgrade with modern Battle.net integration. So, the lack of that is strike one. Strike two, then, is fundamentally false advertising. There were supposed mm. to be four hours of Reforged cutscenes, promised after them showing a fully remade intro cinematic. Well, what ended up happening is there was four minutes of reforged cutscenes. There's the intro, which is pretty nice. There's then the Arthas versus Illidan cutscene. Now, that was one of the most memorable, important moments of Warcraft 3. And, uh, I mean, the reforging of it, like, you know, our upstairs office is our game development studio. We just sat there and laughed at it. Our animator barely survived the experience. The animations are stiff. The atmosphere is non-existent. And the upgraded unit models, I mean, they do nothing to help it. They are so stiff. It's quite amazing. Beyond that, though, the original cinematics from Warcraft 3, they are the same as before, but they're in 1080p instead yeah. of 240. Now, that is something that they, um, you know, they did say before, and they said they would just be 1080p renders. But, you know, for a game sold in four plus hours of reforged cutscenes, what ended up happening is completely unacceptable because of the bulk of the cutscenes. So they were promised to look so much different to what we actually get. I mean, look at the comparison between this footage shown at BlizzCon 2018 and then the live version of the same scene at the Culling of Stratholme. Now, the BlizzCon version, it's still up on their website. It's still advertising the game, but it's not in the game. Mm. And, I mean, it's just unacceptable for $30. Yes, they promised a cinematic style of camera work for the whole thing. You know, dramatic cuts to characters, wide shots, close-ups, far more dynamic scenes with a lot of work. What did they actually ship with War 3 Reforged? Well, it's just like Warcraft 3, the original, the RTS camera, and some talking text boxes. So, if that's strike two... Yeah, it's, it comes across as quite stiff. I think they had to pull back personally on a lot of the camera angles and directorial style cinematics of those in-game cutscenes because of probably issues with just performance, to be honest with you, as well as the time it takes to put that all together. I think a lot of this stuff is essentially cut. Very obviously, it's not like a record amazing thing to say here is because they just run out of time. They just realized that everything that they promised, everything they were coming up with, were like, okay, well, we thought this was only going to take a couple of months. It turns out this is going to take like six or seven months. And we thought this was only going to take a couple of weeks. Turns out this is going to take two months at least. Well, all right. Well, if we don't, if we just, you know, just add in a couple of little bits, but otherwise keep everything the same. Everyone wants Warcraft 3 to be the same, right? And we'll just spin that story. And that's kind of how it came across. And I think that's very much what they did, is they probably did fully intend to actually change cutscenes and how things performed, but they ran out of time. They just didn't have resources. And it was a sort of a win-win, a not really in this case, because obviously how it's reviewed, but situation to sort of backtrack and say okay you're not going to get that but you didn't really want that anyway you wanted warcraft 3 to be more like warcraft 3 so they're trying to spin it that way but obviously even that doesn't fall through completely what is strike three simply put it is all the problems the game runs terribly if at all with a lot of users reporting terrible frame rates terrible starting we've had loads of issues many of the custom games are broken there is no single player custom game functionality custom campaigns are missing and a whole bunch more then there's the ui it looks nothing like what was initially advertised so again they kind of reneged in that one and then in keeping with the load masking menu transitions of old well they just feel really unresponsive navigating through the game like it somehow feels worse than in the classic client which is quite impressive there are also loads of missing features at which ones well almost every feature that the original Battle.net had, because in their move to the new Battle.net, they didn't replicate in-game player profiles, 
chat commands, clans, they're not there. There's no cross-region play either. The new Battle.net integration does add some features, as was advertised, but they lost far more in that transition than they actually gained. Then the EULA has also changed the end user license agreement so that anything created in the world editor, well, that is the intellectual property of Blizzard. Yes, they're still very salty over losing Dota, but uh, in doing this, they've pretty much guaranteed that they're never going to bottle that lightning again. Yeah, there's so many things to cover in this regard. Um, there will be other videos which go into that in a bit more detail, such as the EULA change in for custom games and the features that are missing, like those will be covered as well by myself um, in other videos, because otherwise I'll end up repeating myself if I answer everything, so to speak, in this one. But the features, the biggest problem really, like if we just get down to brass tacks, is that Warcraft 3 was stripped and rebuilt anew but the new is worse in almost every single way and it's missing a lot of the qualities that we came to appreciate when we just logged into warcraft 3 heck i'll just go into a single player custom game single player tail defense all right i'll just fight versus a computer oh i want to test some things i'm going to put in some cheat codes you can't do that anymore everything is online there is no single player as of this point of recording there is no zero ping there is always ping and sometimes that ping can be very bad depending on the service there is no freedom i suppose it feels like you are now forced and that is really what it comes down to being the biggest problem for me is losing that original warcraft 3 so that's in regards to that that's my sort of like tighten down response to that and for the custom games thing i don't know what they were thinking with this apparently this exists in starcraft 2 and it's just more accepted but i feel like this was like so unnecessary because the custom game community and the map makers have just given so much life i mean how much content have i gotten out of custom games and there's still so many that i haven't even visited or played yet and for Blizzard to essentially shit on those people and say, right, your content is now mine, is disgusting, to be quite frank with you. Um, I really hope that they actually backtrack on that. I would like them to also backtrack and just essentially give the opportunity for single-player Warcraft 3 or the old version of it without people having to go to a private server. I don't think that's going to happen, but at least this one is more of a moral thing where morally they can say you know what your custom games are your own please use our you know engine to create the next dota or whatever you like you know if you can do that then fair enough props to you and thanks very much you know what are they do another dota is not really going to happen again it was a light like he said lightning in a bottle it's not really likely to occur again so it's crazy for them to control every other map maker and every other project they're working on just because of this one property that managed to just blow up the world that's it's too late like this has already been done it is so bonkers to actually shit on the people that are still part of the community because the vast majority of people that are probably playing warcraft 3 are still the original map makers sure you might get some new ones come in and say oh i i didn't know about warcraft 3 and i make maps I do it on a different engine. I'll, I'll try it on Warcraft 3. I mean, maybe there's a chance they'll create another Dota, but let's face it, like, I don't think so. It's just really, really rude and just terrible for the people that actually have dedicated themselves to this game. So I really hope that this is one that they can, they can backtrack on it. They can take that away. Can they give us the original Warcraft 3 back? I don't think they're going to do that because they want everything to be on Reforge, essentially. I don't think we're ever going to get single player again. I would love that. I don't think that's going to happen. Whereas at least this one, I feel like it could happen. But it comes down to morality. And lately, that's not been shown to be the case for Blizzard. So let's continue before I go on too long. 
Uh, it also bans the use of third-party IP in custom maps, and that theoretically kills a lot of the most, like, popular custom maps from back in the day. I mean, that's if the custom maps even work in the new client anyway, and even if they do work, good luck finding anyone to play with. Now, this is anecdotal, but the lunchtime Legion TD in Custom Hero Survival that were a staple in our office a while ago, um, well, you know, the custom games list in Reforged for some reason is way less populated and varied than it was in Classic Warcraft 3. What about Classic Warcraft 3? Well, this is maybe the most egregious thing of all. Classic Warcraft 3 has not escaped this nightmare, and this is the bit that's unforgivable. Even if you wanted nothing to do with Reforged, and you just wanted to play the game you already owned on Battle.net, as it was, as it has been for 17 years, you're out of luck. Screw you. That's what it is. As one forum poster puts it, Reforged is a forced downgrade even for classic users. The old client is gone. Even if you have not purchased Reforged, the Battle.net client will download a useless 30 gigabytes of art assets and upgrade your game to the new UI and BNet integration. That means that the only way to play Classic Warcraft 3, the one that works flawlessly, is to install an old version and to keep it as far away from the BNet client as is possible. And even then, the original Battle.net servers have been taken down, so that's only for LAN or single player. In releasing their new remastered version, Blizzard literally killed the old version of Warcraft 3. Warcraft 3, a game beloved by many and still played by many today, has been killed by Blizzard's own hands and on purpose. Obviously, players are extremely unhappy about this. The forums, the subreddit, the Metacritic, they are truly aflame. The Metacritic will be covered in another video, I believe. I haven't watched any of these videos, but I know roughly essentially what they're going to cover. And this is something that's going to be covered in another video. So I'm going to go more into detail with the Metacritic stuff later on. And rightly so. Last night, the user score was 2.4. This morning, 1.6. Uh, moved down to 1.5 during this video's creation. In this case, players, you know, they're often quite quick to ask for refunds, but that's uh, actually a bit tricky because of customer support. They seemed to be offering refunds through support chat initially, but that has now been seeing very mixed results. One Australian user was actually denied a refund based on um, his time in game. And that actually goes against Australian consumer protections, which is a big no-no. Now, Yikes. according to their customer support, Australian consumer law does not override their terms of sale because they're a US company. That's simply not true. And even Valve were fined 3 million Australian dollars for misleading conduct in this area in 2018. Now, the user since contacted them with this information and has not seen any response yet, so that's an updating or an ongoing story. And the severity of this stuff, I don't think it needs to be explained any further. To put it very simply here, Blizzard have been acting in a wholly anti-consumer manner, and uh, I think that is downright despicable. That said, though, if I actually sit down and think about the situation, well, I think the Classic Games team just did not have the resources to create an entire game, uh, you know, with new assets. So, you know, this was outsourced pretty much entirely to a Malaysian studio called Lemon Sky. Now, Lemon Sky have done some work on other games like... All right, before we get into this, this is the thing that confuses me, is I, too, think that actually the resources are not properly managed and the project was above and beyond what the classic games team were prepared to take on i actually have a lot of respect for the classic games team i think they're genuinely good people and this is not a bias i never actually got to meet them even though i got flown out to blizzcon just letting you know i did get a blizzcon flight and uh, a hotel to go essentially just report on not even warcraft 3 specific i don't even know what the hell i was doing there really to be frank with you i think i was just like one of the few people that just like oh we got a bit of remaining budget let's bring him on board but um, yeah, I covered some Warcraft 3 and just what happened at BlizzCon. I have a series where I just sort of showed my experience as being at BlizzCon. That's kind of how I treated that was just what my experience at BlizzCon was, not necessarily specifically Warcraft 3. But I don't think any of them have ill intent. I think it's wrong for people to attack them in that regard because, I mean, what? They're not going to be like moustache twirling cartoon villains were like oh how can we mess this up i'm looking forward to tearing apart warcraft 3 no they were given basically pretty much an impossibly difficult task way too above and beyond what they were ready for and the the, the resources thing is confusing because blizzard have so much money but at the same time what were their resources were they limited the credits seem to indicate that they fucking weren't. 
because I watched an hour long of credits, an hour of freaking credits of non-stop scrolling of people's names that were involved in this project one way or another. But it's so overly bloated and convoluted. Like, how many people were truly on board with this project? How many people were truly working on this, were putting their time and effort to art, direction, story, narratives, etc.? What? How many, like... What was the credits basically? Was ninety nine percent of it just talking about people that had previously worked on a Blizzard game at some point in their life? That's how it kind of felt. It's just like, oh, this person once breathed on a copy of a hard copy of Warcraft Three, fro the Frozen Throne, sixteen years ago, or fourteen years ago. I mean, you know, that technically counts as being involved in it some way. Put his name in the credits. Like, how many people were actually? working on reforge because i don't think there was actually that many people i don't think they got the amount of help that they probably deserved or needed so unfortunately they get thrown under the bus here and i think that's partially wrong because i don't i don't think necessarily the management was exactly as it should be and properly um well managed i don't think uh, the direction was necessarily all taken into account but i think warcraft 3 when it comes down to it was just bigger than anyone sort of expected when it came to fixing, updating, bringing to the latest and greatest graphics and people's systems and making everything work. It's an old game. It has a lot of old code. A lot of the people that worked on it don't really exist anymore. Well, not in that way. Like they're on other projects of their own doing their own thing. I don't know. Uh, how many people were originally there to be able to help now bring it to today's forefront. So I feel like it was making the best of trying to bring it to today's... So they, I don't think they were prepared for what Warcraft 3 really required of them if they wanted to bring the project that they were trying to do, which was all of these new cutscenes and graphics and cinematics, etc. I think they should have just kept it humble and like the StarCraft, just remaster it just put some new fresh paint on it don't overdo it but they did they overdid it they completely overdid it and it shows because they're still patching the game after the fact and they'll probably continue to be doing it despite everyone hating on them and they're going to get no gratitude for it for a long time to come Starcraft remastered and their name is credited in some beautiful looking games. They actually don't seem to be doing bad work here and maybe it's just a case of bad direction from Blizz. So I think the blaming them is really not that fair. I think it's actually probably all on Blizz. The classic team, they likely did want to do this game just of course they love like War 3, but they were probably stuck with a shoestring budget and probably had no proper art resources to actually coordinate in an effective manner with Lemon Sky and this is the result. It is a game that arguably looks worse than the original and feels rushed out the gate, even after a much later than expected release date. It's broken, it's battered, and the original cannot even be played in the same way anymore because they killed old Bnet. And really, one Reddit user actually left an extremely on-point comment. Blizzard has always been about absolutely flawless polish. In the late 90s and early 2000s, Blizzard was a name you could trust for polish and for a focus on the player's experience. The attitude shown to Warcraft 3 Reforged is the exact opposite of the attitude that Blizzard had towards their classic beloved games. And I think we all know where the blame should be going here. The bean counters, the money people. The RTS genre is largely dead, much to, you know, my sadness. And I think they've put the final nail in this game's coffin. It's a dark time when, you know, the absolute shining example of a classic game, uh, you know, is actually a Microsoft example. Age of Empires Definitive Edition, like, that is basically perfect. It brought everything back in the way that you would want with so much quality of life, convenience, all of that stuff from a modern game. And having recently got into AoE HD, uh, AoE 2 HD, and then seeing Definitive Edition, it is incredible how well Microsoft treated their classic franchise. Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition has underwent a massive amount of work and it truly is the best version of AoE 2. It is worth every penny. The love put into that is evident and it's all ahead of Microsoft, you know, reviving that franchise for Age of Empires 4. And that is how you treat a franchise that people have put so much love into. Blizzard, you are an absolute embarrassment to your legacy. 
it is so damn obvious. And with that, I'm basically out. If you want to see the old Blizzard North team upholding classic Blizzard values, then take a look at the video that we did yesterday. And with that, thank you very much for watching. I think you'll enjoy the video we did yesterday, so be sure to check that out. Your likes are always appreciated because of the YouTube algorithm. And with that, uh, what a sad day, and I'll see you next time. Alrighty. So uh, pop over, give that video a like. And thank you very much, everyone, for watching this one. Like I say, there'll be more uh, witty reacts videos. Let me know what you think of this content. Am I a scumbag for doing this? Do you enjoy me giving my opinions every now and then? I don't know what you think, because I don't really do this very often. So for now, I'm signing off as well, and I'm moving into the next one. So take care. Bye-bye.